Hello all. Welcome to part 72 of STNG training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate about default STNG reports and their real-time usage. So let's get started. Till now, we have not seen any generated test reports, right? Here is the project. Okay, we have run the automation scripts, but I have not shown you any reports. But first of all, what exactly are these reports? Okay, I am saying here, TestNG will generate some default reports containing the test results and and whether these TestNG default reports are really used in real time or not is something I'm going to cover in this session. So what are reports? Before I talk about this default test engine reports, okay, that I'm going to practically demonstrate now, first we have to understand what are reports. Reports contain the results of the automation scripts which got executed, okay? Reports will contain the results, test results. Some automation scripts may fail, some automation scripts may skip, some automation scripts may pass, right? Some automation scripts, okay? All these uh, results will be there, right? that will appear in the reports, okay? So some HTML reports will be there in that we'll see the re results, okay? Reports contain the test automation results like fail, skip, pass, and all so on, okay? Which I'm going to practically show you now anyhow. So TestNG auto-generates. Without TestNG, we'll not get any reports, okay? For example, this project is there. This project is configured with TestNG. Right, by default it is a Maven project, Maven Java project you can say, and it will not have TestNG by default. We have added the libraries of TestNG and we have installed TestNG plugin here. So now we have TestNG. So after we have TestNG, TestNG will auto-generate the different test reports containing the test automation results of uh, failed test cases, pass the test cases and skip test cases and so on, okay? So let me show you practically, guys, how to generate that reports. So uh, I'll do one thing. Here we have the testng.xml file, okay? This is the same project, guys, that we have been using from the previous sessions, okay? So if you are following the previous sessions, this project should be comfortable for you, okay? So if you are coming in a sequential order from the, my previous videos, then this session should be comfortable for you. So this is the testng.xml file, which I got created in one of the previous sessions. So here we have all the automation scripts that we are going to run. We are going to run the login class. Login class contain five automation tests methods. Okay, register tests, register class contain four test automation methods. Search test, that is search class contains three automation test methods. Okay, out of all these, if I open this login.java, okay, there are five automation tests I mentioned, right? Five automation test methods. First one, second one, third one, fourth one, and last one, fifth one. In these five things, we are intentionally failing the first one, okay? The first one will be intentionally failed because here I added, edit your account information is the correct one. Intentionally, I want this particular test automation script to fail. So I added an extra ABC here, which will fail the automation script, okay? So remaining all will pass. Only this one will fail, okay? If you want me to skip anything, then I can do one thing, okay? Uh, let's say I can do one thing like uh, this uh, depends on depends on methods. So do let's see. Let's give this method name. So if this particular automation script fails, okay, pass, pass I guess. No, this is the way or one minute, let me Write it in double quotes. Yeah, this one is a correct format. So I have to give in double quotes, okay? Log in with valid credentials. If this particular test method fails, since this particular test method is depending on the first test method, this will be skipped. It will not be executed because if this passes only, this will work, okay? If this fails, this will be skipped. You'll see that. Remaining third, fourth, fifth will run, no problem. Third, fourth, fifth will run without any problem and register and search will run and pass, okay? All the test methods in the register will pass, all the search in register will pass, 
all the uh, methods in the search will pass only in the login first one will fail and uh, since the first one fails second one which is depending on the first method will skip will get skipped remaining all three will pass okay so we'll have a you know write all the test results like pass skip find uh, fail okay now let me run the testng.xml file which will run uh, there's one more thing that i have to do mm. So here I'll uh, I'll go to the testng.xml file. Earlier I commented this one. I'll recommend de this one, okay? Uh, and also I'll do what small changes, okay? I'll I'll use the listeners listeners methods. And also here in the previous session I was using this after method. So I'll remove this part, guys. This is nowhere required, okay? So dependency injection way of capturing the screenshot I am removing. I am depending on the listeners, okay? Listeners way of taking the screenshots and all. Now all good guys. Uh, let's run this session.xml file. If you under, if you have gone through the previous sessions, uh, you would have understood the changes I have done here with the listener stacks and all those stuff. Okay, right click run as testng suit. Test execution started. The listeners test methods are getting fired up, as you can see here. The first test method is getting executed. Done. Second one is also done. Third one, fourth one, fifth one. Okay, you see, out of 12 automation steps, you are already getting the uh, test re uh, results, automation test results in the Eclipse ID console by default. Okay, Eclipse ID console by default. Here also, you'll get the results. But we will not get that in a proper HTML format or something, okay? So here we can see here started failed. Other thing got started and skipped. Second test got skipped. And third one got passed. Fourth one got passed. Fifth one got passed. Remaining all got passed, okay? So total out of 12, 10 got passed. One got failed and one got skipped as I mentioned. Now, apart from the apart from the Eclipse ID console results, we also have TestNG results console. Okay, testng uh, test results tab, results of running suit. Here also we can see the details. Like this one got uh, failed because of no such element exception, all the exception details at what line and all. This one got skipped because of this. Uh, test method is depending on this test method and this one got failed, so this one got skipped. Okay, and uh, remaining all got passed. As you can see, this is the testng results. Okay, testng results uh, kind of tab, okay. We can see the results in Eclipse ID console. We can see the results in the test engine results tab. Okay. And also we can get a report. Okay. You see here at this moment, you will not see any report, but let's refresh this project once. After running the script, just refresh the project. Before refreshing the product, that is, uh, before refreshing the product project, there is no test output folder here. Now, if I refresh here, you'll get some folder known as test output like this after refreshing. Expand that. Now here you will see something known as index.html and emailable report.html. These two are the reports, guys. Okay, the, these are the two reports. Uh, testng default report. This is testng default report. This is one type, and second one is the emailable report, which is second type. Okay, so this one we can use it for emailing to the clients or other people. It is a very simple, straightforward report. And this one is another type of testng report. Both are the default testng reports which got generated after running the automation scripts. Okay, we have not done anything. We have just run the scripts and testng has taken care of creating this test output folder under that. These two reports, index.html and email level report, got created. Right click on this and say open with web browser. In the Chrome browser, it will open, guys. You can see this is one of the report you will see. Okay, so it contains a lot of stuff, guys. Okay, it's saying three test stacks are there, three test stacks, login test stack. If you can see here in our uh, testng.xml file, First one is login test stack. Under that login class related test methods are run. Register test stack under that register. Search test stack under search related search class related test methods got run. Three test, uh, three test stacks, okay? And uh, here there are no grouping concept. Uh, I have covered the groups related stuff in the previous sessions. Uh, since we don't are not implementing any groups, uh, groups related stuff is not coming. Times, okay, how much time it has taken for each and every login with value credential has taken this much of milliseconds of time almost two seconds this is almost two seconds this is 1.5 seconds this is almost uh, near to 1.2 seconds 
uh, this is like nine milliseconds very fast because just print statements are there in this. So these are uh, milliseconds actually. You cannot consider them as seconds. And uh, reporter output, you just go. There's nothing here. Ignored methods. There are no ignored methods. Okay, I didn't ignore any method. If you put at the rate ignore or an, some annotation before the test methods, such methods, uh, test methods which got uh, ignored because of that ignore or something, will be displayed here. Chronological view, the order in which uh, this particular test methods got executed. First login uh, class related test methods because in the test engine XML file we have the login test first. In that login class test methods will be executed according to the priority individual priority in the login class. First, login with valid credentials, which got failed. Then login with valid email and email, which got skipped. And then other one, uh, you see, uh, set up tier down. Set up tier down, okay, is coming. These are also, you see, the order set up tier down, okay. Then this one, set up tier down, okay. Then set up tier down, set up tier down. Like this, all this uh, one, two, three, four, five test methods got executed. Then uh, coming to the register, coming to the register, okay. So here valid email and email pa password doesn't trigger the setup or tear down because it got skipped, guys, okay. That's why setup and tear down are not there for the second test method. For all the remaining test methods, again, setup, tear down and got executed. In the coming to the register, we have these four test methods which got executed and all got passed. And coming to the search, we don't have the setup and tear down in these individual classes. So this is the order in which... Uh, uh, the methods inside this particular classes like login, register, and such classes got executed. And now here are the results. Total 12 test methods are there in that one got failed, one got skipped, and remaining 10 got passed. Uh, this is the one test method which got failed, and this is the results. These are the reasons behind the failure. Okay, and coming to this one, skipped one. So this is the results for the skipping. It is depending on this particular test method, it got skipped. All the password methods, these are all the password methods. You can see all the results of the password search, login, and register related class operated. And you can go with a different theme, older theme, guys. This is the latest theme. If you want to go with, a, uh, you want to see the results in the older theme, then switch to retro theme, which is the older theme, guys, okay? Earlier, we used to have this theme. Now, this ultra theme came up, which is the latest one, okay? So, the concepts are same, just the uh, theme looks different, okay? So, apart from this, I, will, I was telling you another report, which got generated here, that is emailable report, guys. Emailable report, okay? This is called as emailable report, guys. Right click, open with web browser. This is a high level report, guys. Unlike this kind of uh, confusing report, here we have the uh, test ng emailable report, uh, which you can share with the clients over the email, okay? It is very easy to understand, as you can see, login test, restart test, search test, how many passed, three passed. In that login test, three test methods got passed, one got skipped, one got uh, failed. Uh, zero got retired, how much time it totally took for uh, completing all the login test uh, test methods. Uh, yeah, total time. This is the total time. Like that some uh, high level table is there and individually also you see login related, login with this got failed, the second one got skipped, third one got passed and so on, okay? So these are, these three got passed. Then uh, this four got passed. At a high level, guys, okay, and what are the uh, exception details? This is an emailable report, guys. This, this you can email to your client, okay, uh, or your uh, any other managers or whatever it is to whom which uh, you have to share the test ng reports, okay? That is an email, email, emailable report, okay? The name as speaks, you can send it over email, okay, to anyone who want to know the status of the execution results. So in real time, we'll be having thousands of automation scripts, not just this 10 or 12. So a big report will be generated in that case, okay? So anyhow, these are the default generated test engine reports. If you talk about this uh, default test engine reports and their real-time usage, do we really use this uh, default test engine reports which got generated by default by test engine in, in real-time? Do we really share these reports with the client and all those stuff? The answer is no, guys, okay? This is just for knowledge purpose, but uh, we are not going to share index.html or emailable hyphen report.html with any of our clients because these are very default uh, basic reports, you can say, very basic reports, guys, okay? So test engine reports are not an advanced reports. They are non-advanced reports, you can mention. There are other advanced reports available in the market, okay? So what are the reports that we generally use in real time? Though test engine is generating some default reports, that doesn't mean that we have to use in real time. They will be created, guys, but whether to use or not is our Decision, okay? 
in real time we generally don't use okay whatever the projects have worked so far have never used test engine reports i never share test engine reports with my clients okay so though they get generated okay test engine has a capability to generate these reports but these reports are not advanced reports they are very basic reports okay so what are these advanced reports then why we have to ignore the test engine default reports even though they are generated with the results why we are not using them because in the market we have some advanced uh, test automation results uh, showing reports okay like extend reports and allure reports these are the advanced reports that we generally use in the real time but we don't use the test engine default reports only for knowledge purpose we have to learn that what are uh, how the test engine will generate the default reports and in coming to the real time we don't use it, okay so hope guys you understood uh, what are the default test engine reports that will be generated using test engine okay in the projects and uh, whether we use them in real time or not if not what are the reports that we use and all those stuff i covered in this session so that's all for this session in the next session i'm going to cover another test engine topic for you till then see you bye bye